What is up guys, it's Mega giving you another deck for Link Evolution. We're going to be doing um, one of my older decks, because a few of you have been um, questing it, and that is a Blackwing deck. This deck's of course my own opinion of the day, and it's completely cool if you disagree with any of the cards that are shown in this video. Black Wings are one of them decks, guys, just like and just like a lot of other ones that have just only benefited because of Master Wolf 5. So now they can get up to their old tricks, but of course there are a lot of Link monsters, so you can get into um, a lot of more shenanigans because of um, just how spamming the Black Wings are. They just spam the field so much, you can just do a lot of annoying, terrifying plays. Um... If you're struggling to make this deck or any deck shown so far, I highly recommend you check out the card hub. Not only if it will tell you a card is in this game or not, it will tell you where to find it. So, just campaign, challenge mode, or even a card uh, um, card pack. That is in the description down below, along with my Twitch, where I do try and stream as best as I can, playing other games as well as um, Yu-Gi-Oh, where we just chill and grind cards. And with that, guys, let's get into the video. Starting us off is the two copies of Ash Blossom Joy Springs. She's limited to two guys, otherwise we would put in a third one. Ash Blossom is... Um, just one of the best hand traps in my opinion. Um, should your opponent do anything such as add a card from the deck to the hand, special summon from the deck, or send a card from the deck to the graveyard, Ash Blossom shuts that um, shuts that effect down, which is just great, especially when your opponent's trying to search and just set up a combo. Ash Blossom's just great, you just combo it, send to the grave. And then going on to the Black Wings, we are running three copies of Oster the South Wind. Um, Oster, guys, is just great. So. You, do, um, you are playing Lure of Darkness, so if you do banish one of your monsters, um, Oster has an ability where when this card is normal summoned, you can target a level 4 or lower Blackwing that was banished and special summon it to the field. So, there you go. Um, Lure of Darkness is not actually a downside, guys. You literally play a Lure, draw two cards, summon Oster, bring your card back. It also works well with Simmon, because Simmon's effect lets you set a Black Whirlwind and then... Um, instantly um, banishes one of your black wings from your hand. So it just works in combo with um, Simon. Um, and also she has an effect to a, a very decent effect in the graveyard where you can play where you can um, banish this card from your grave to place a wedge counter on each face up monster your opponent controls and that comes into play with our black wing full armor master. And then coming to two copies of Blizzard the Far North. Blizzard Far North's great, guys. Um, you know, um, you really don't want to see this card turn one. You really want to see it turn two, turn three, because when this card is normal summoned, you get to target a level, um, a level four or lower black wing in your grey special summon. So it's great to go into a couple like a decent link play actually, like Wide Strix, or go into our level six synchro that we're running. That's the only reason you really run Blizzard the Far North. And three copies of Borrow the Spear. This is where where I mean, guys, where these next couple of monsters, you'll just think, what the hell? So, Borrow the Sphere, guys, when this card... Um, so, if you control a face-up monster other than Blackwing, Borrow the Sphere, or I should say face-up Blackwing, you can special on Blackwing, Borrow the Sphere from your hand. And, and, and if you've seen, it does not say once per turn. So, for instance, if your hand is, I don't know... Um, Blizzard the Far North and three Blackwing, Borrow the Spheres. You could summon all three of them straight away. That way you've got four monsters straight away. See what I mean? It is in broken. Surprise, it's not once per turn. Um, and if this card attacks a monster in defense mode, Bora can do piercing damage as well. And then three copies of Blackwing Gale of the Whirlwind. Tuna guys as well, um, well along with Oster and um, Blizzard of Far North. This guy, if you control a Blackwing other than Gale of the Whirlwind, special on this card from your hand. Again, that's not a once per turn effect. You can special on three of them if you really want. Um, once per turn, you can target a one face-up monster your opponent controls. Its attack and defense become half its attack and defense. So, Gale can just cut down a lot of like beefy monsters' attack, um, attack and defense in half. That way, when you go into your plays and everything, you can just overpower them with these. Um, two copies of um, Hatton the Dust. Now, Hatton is um, another monster where you can special summon it from your, um, from your hand. But Hatton is a bit of a weird one compared to the others. So, when Hatton is special summoned um, from your hand... You can target a um, Blackwing you control, um, other than um, um, other than um, this card, and Hatton will gain that monster's level. So, for instance, if you if you um, attack um, if you target Bora, this card becomes level six. You target um, Go of the Whirlwind, it's going to become a level five. So it's just a way to just kind of like boost its um, level up high, so you can go into um, Full Armor Master and stuff like Raikiri very easy. Um, Free Chris the Crack of the Dawn. Now, if you control a Blackwing other than Chris the Crack of the Dawn, you special summon this card from your hand as well. You can only special summon Chris the Dawn. Um, you can only special summon Chris the Crack of the Dawn by, um, by its effect once per turn. So Chris, so Chris is kind of weaker compared to Bora and compared to um, 
Gayo because they don't have, they can only special summon it once per turn this way. But Chris is still not bad, guys. Like once per turn, if this card, uh, so once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by spell or traps. It does have a little bit of protection, and it's just um, it, just another great addition to go into like spammy synchro, um, spammy synchro and Xyz plays. And then going into three copies of Simon the Poison Wind. Now, what I, I, I like Simon, guys, because um, its effect is if you control no monsters and this card is in your hand, you can banish one other Black Wing. So you see what I mean by the banish. Then you can automatically play Black Whirlwind from your um, deck. Your opponent cannot um, Ash Blossom that because it's not searching. It's literally just boom, straight away play. Um, um, and um, immediately after, you can normal summon Summon without a cost. And then because you've normal su summoned Simon, Black Whirlwind's effect will trigger. So you can search out the Oster. And then you can normal summon one additional monster that turn. So what this whole combo is, you play Simon's effect... Banish one of your monsters. Play Simon, Black Whirlwind, obviously you, you, you play the Black Whirlwind. Black Whirlwind's effect will then trickle in, search out the Oster, and then you normal summon Oster. Because you've normal summoned Oster, you can target your Banish monster back to the field. Then, obviously, because you've summoned summon another Black Wing, Black Whirlwind's effect will trigger again, searching you out the Hatton. Then you can play the Hatton. You see what I mean? All that just from playing one monster effect. It's absolute broken, guys. And also... It's effect can only activate if you control no monsters. Yes, there is that. But if you do control monsters like a board and you draw into Hath and draw into Simon, you can just play a Laura Darkness and just obviously draw two cards. It's not the end of the world, really. So yeah, I like um, I like Simon. Great, good, great, good card. And then finally, we're running one copy of Black Wing, Zephyrus the Elite. If this card is in your grave, you can return one face up card you control um, um in control um back to your hand and special summon this card. And if you do, you take 400 points of damage, which is a bit unfortunate, but for a free summon from the grave is fantastic. You can only do this once per duel, or rise it'll just be spamming for days. But um, that's the only reason why you only control one. Um, so why you only point one Zephyrus in your deck. Um, this card's actually great to combo with Simon because when you because during the end phase, if you play Simon's effect, you have to send the Black Whirlwind to the graveyard and take a thousand points of damage. But if Zephyrus is in the graveyard when you've done your combo. You just bounce the Black Whirlwind back to your hand, summon Zephyrus, and then you can't take the thousand points of damage because your Black Whirlwind's in your hand. It's not in the um, it's not on the field to go to the graveyard. So you can really get around Simmons' effect really easily. Oh, I did forget. If you are doing Simmons' ability, you can only it, it locks you into playing only dark monsters for the rest of the turn. Please bear in mind about that. And then going into some other cards, we've got one copy of Dragon Bust Drag. Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, that first thing's a tongue twister. And you're not really going to play its ability where you can only target one, one Buster Blade, forget about that. Um, its effect is, when this card is equipped to a monster, your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. So this card shuts your opponent from the extra deck. And why am I doing that? Because of Union Carrier. So we'll get into Union Carrier eventually, but when this card is equipped to one of our monsters, your opponent can't special summon from the extra deck, and that with the Miss Valley lock we're about to talk about, it shuts down your opponent from really playing the game, and they really get annoyed by that. And then, of course, we've got Miss Valley Apex Avion. Now, um, with this card, once per chain, not once per turn, you can play as many times as you want. When a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can target one Miss Valley card from your um, you control, return it to the hand, and if you do, you get to negate get the activation and destroy the card. So why is this, I mean, this card also works in itself as well, so it's kind of great, but what's this card card really good for? I'll tell you, because of Miss Valley Thunderbird. So when this face-up card on the field returns to the hand, you special summon it. This card cannot attack during the turn, it was special summoned by this effect. This card does not say once per return. So if you have these two cards in play, which again is searchable with Union Carriers, what you do it like, you play, um, if your opponent does anything, um, you um, apex the um, Thunderbird, negate your opponent's card. Um, um, you, you you negate and destroy your opponent's card. Because Thunderbird's been bounced back to your hand, it's a fair activate. Summon back to the field. If your opponent tries to do anything again, apex it again back to your hand. And because it doesn't say once per turn, summon it back to the field. You see what I mean? It's, called, it's known as an infinite lock. You can just shut your opponent down the entire time. It's not unbreakable. All your opponent has to do to get around this is literally just attack into Thunderbird. Then obviously you can't do the combo no more unless you're going to bounce back Avion. So yeah, that is really uh, it is really an impressive combo as well, guys. I really do like it. And going on to the spells, you're running two copies of Allure of Darkness. Now you might think, why am, I, why am I only running two? Good reason for that, guys. It's limited to two. 
So you see in the bottom right where we've got two copies of Infinite Impermanence. If I, um, if Ash Blossom and Allura weren't limited to two, I'd take out them two and obviously put in the other two copies of the cards I've just mentioned. So Allura Darkness, you draw two cards, then you can banish one Dark Monster from your hand. And if you don't have a Dark Monster, you send your entire hand to the grave. So you don't really want to do that, but because you're going to banish one of your Dark Monsters, hopefully one is going to be a Blackwing, you pretty much are like set. You can then... You're sorted for sim if you normal summon Astex, then you can just take your monster back. And also, you can, if cu if push comes to shove, you can banish the Buster, um, um, the Buster Sword, whatever card, because it is a dark monster as well. Three copies of Black Whirlwind, guys. What a card this is! When a Black Ring monster is normal summoned to your field, you can add a Black Ring from your hand as long as it has um, has less attack than the monster you've summoned. So. You have this and Chris. Chris pretty much lets you special will let you search out every single one of our Black Wings because they're all weaker than Chris, the crack of the dawn. So you play Black Whirlwind, summon Chris, you can add Bore of the Spear, special summon, go into a rank play or a link play, bring out Gale the Whirlwind, go into a synchro play. See what I mean? Absolute fantastic Black Whirlwind. And also it's brilliant when you combine it with Simon because Simon just automatically summons it from your deck. And then three copies of Core by the Grave. Yes, we are running hand traps such as Infinite Pertinence and Ash Blossom. But what do we do want to do? We do want to be Ash Blossom by ourselves. So, um, we, um, so obviously you're running Core by the Grave to stop your opponent from doing anything. And also, um, like, try, so, they, so they can't Ash Blossom you or hand trap you, DD Crow you, stuff like that. And also, it just gets around. If your opponent tries to activate any monster effects in the grave, you can just shut them down. Like, they try to resurrect from the grave or just um, play any monster effects in the grave. Just banish them, shut them down. One copy of Foolish Burial. Great, guys. You can send your Zephyr straight to the grave so you can prime it. And that's pretty much the main reason you're going to play, play this is to prime the Zephyr. Like, um, if you've got Zephyr in hand and you've got this, and you can pretty much prime yourself a Monster Reborn if you want. There's many ways you can do it. But, yeah, it's really great just to get Zephyr in the grave so you can play it to fet for a free summon. Uh, one into the void. Now, if you have three or more cards in your hand, uh, uh, hand you get to draw an additional card. This card is limited to one, so that's why we're only willing the one copy. And if you do during the end phase of the turn, you have to discard your entire hand. But I'm not gonna lie. By the way of monsters and spells we have, and we only have two traps, you're gonna go through your hand easily, especially with the black wings. They can special and you're gonna go through your hand like there's no tomorrow. So. Um, you don't really need to like, oh, I haven't got anything in my hand. You could just set the card so that know you're fine. And drawing that extra card really does come in handy. And then one copy of Monster Reborn. Combo Extender, just extend your plays. Bring back monsters that obviously you've used for Link Summoning. You've used for, um, um, for Exceed Summoning. Say your opponent got around, you miss Valley and you've still got Apex. Play Monster Reborn, bring back the Thunderbird. It's just stuff like that. A one copy of Rank Up Magic Soul Shade Force. This card, I think, is going to get banned if they ever redo this ban list. The reason why, guys, is because um, it's absolute broken. So when this, so you pay half your life points. You target one Raid Raptor Exceeds in your graveyard, special summon it, and if you do, you get to target an Exceeds monster in your extra deck and special summon it as long as it's two ranks higher. So this one card, you bring back four Strix. Um, in your graveyard, and then you pretty much go straight into Cyber Dragon Infinity. And this card is searchable with White Strix. So, yep, that's a very terrifying combo. We'll get into it in, in, when we get to White Strix. Um, Upstart Goblin makes it a 39 card deck, guys. You don't care if your opponent gains the thousand life points, you're going to burn them quick anyway, and you get to draw that another card. Again, draw power, you need it. And then, like I say, two copies of Infinite Opponent. So, the reason why I, I said earlier, the reason why I added this card is because of Aurora Darkness, um, Ash Blossom. Um, um, limitations, but this card's not a bad card in itself, guys. It's a hand trap as well, where if you control no cards, you can play this card from your hand. So, say your opponent's going first, and you happen to draw into Infinite Opponents, you can just play it straight away and stop your opponent. So, what's this card do? You could target one face-up monster your opponent controls, negate its effect until the end phase. So that's um, so that's absolutely fantastic. Shuts down your opponent's monster effect. Say this summon out. I don't know. Um, say Stratos. Summon out Stratos, Stratos effect activates upon normal summon. They want to search they want to search one of the elemental hit or one of the heroes from the deck to the hand. Infinite opponent summon, that way they can't add it to the hand. See what I mean? Stuff like that. And um, it doesn't matter if you go first and you have this card in your hand, because you can set your board up, then you can just set infinite opponents and just play it like you would like a normal trap. So it's never really a dead card. And then going on to the extra deck, guys, we're on onto our ex synchros first. We are running um Assault Black Ring, Raikiri the Rain Shower. Now, Raikiri, guys, this card is 
Synchro summons using a Blackwing monster as its material, and Raikiri can become a tuner himself. You're not really going to you don't play Raikiri for that effect. You don't care if he's a Synchro monster because you're not going to use Raikiri to Synchro summon into other monsters. Like you could if you want um, use Raikiri in combination with Ash Blossom if you really really stretch to bring out. Um, Blackwing Armor Master, but you don't, you're not gonna play that really. So, what's Raikiri's other effect? Once per turn, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of other Blackwings you control and destroy them. So, if you've got a full board plus Raikiri, you can destroy like four cards, and if you put Raikiri in the extra months card zone, you can destroy five cards. So, yeah, Raikiri, bloody great guys, and that's not limited to what I means, it's just say once per turn. But if you get rid of Raikiri and then bring it back with Monster Reborn in the same turn, you can use its effect again. Um, one copy of Blackwing. Um, not is it? Um, no Fung the Starlight. God, that's a God, that's a um, hard name to say. If, if this card is special summon, guys, if they're 800 points of damage to your opponent, so it's kind of like a cowboy. If your opponent gets 800 life points, they are in dire need of losing the duel. Um, then you can um, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. It also loses 800 um, attack points. Just so you know, you even if your opponent doesn't have a monster, they will still lose the 800 points of damage. It's only if they do control a monster, it will just be a little bit weaker. Um, and once per turn during your main phase, you can normal summon another black wing in addition to your normal summon. And again, with Black Whirlwind, that's a very, very big um, play because then you can just keep going on, um, on into your combos. And when Blackwing Full Armor Master, this card, guys, is like the towers of the deck. The big bad boss boy of the deck. He owns this deck. The reason why, um, he's unaffected by other card effects. No matter what, no card effects will work on him. And each time your opponent's, your opponent controls, um, or each time your opponent's monster activates its effect, you can place a wedge cam to on him. And what's that wedge cam to your opponent for? Um, for? I'll tell you. Once per turn, you can target one face-up Monster your opponent controls with a red counter and take control of it, which is absolutely fantastic. And also during the end phase, um, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls with a wedge counter. So not only can it nuke the field, you can also take control of them. And this is why this card works so good with Asta. So if your only cards in your hand is Asta and Hatton, you play the Asta, special in the Hatton, Hatton's effect, he gains Asta's um, level, so he comes six, go into this. Asta's ability you can now activate from the graveyard where you can banish it, force all your opponents to have a face-up wedge counter. Not only can you take control of them, or take control of one of them, so you can like go into extra attacks, go into like a synchro um, play, a link play, whatever you've got. During the end phase, he will de then destroy the rest of them if you didn't do it yourself. So you see what I mean? It's just absolutely fantastic for Iron Master. The only way your opponent can really get rid of this bad boy is through battle. They can't get rid of it through card effects, only through battle. And then Blackwing Tamer, Odyssean, Hawk, Joe. Now this card is basically a pure Blackwing. You can't, um, you can't, it has to be a Blackwing tuner and it has to be a non-Blackwing tuner. Um, you, and what this card does, you can target one level five or higher uh, wing beast in your grave, special summon it. So this guy is great when you go back into Raikiri because then you can, um, then play Rykiri's effect, destroy a monster, and then you can overlay both of them to go into Draco Sec. And then during either plays turn, when your opponent activates a card effect that, that um, targets only this card, or when your opponent target um, targets this card for an attack, you can target another Blackwing you control that would... You basically can target another Blackwing you control, and that becomes the target of the attack, basically, or effect. So, yeah, really great. So, again, if you have it in conjunction with Full Armor Master, you're not really going to do this, but if you do... Your opponent tries to activate an effect that will target Hawk. You just send it to Armor Master's way, and Armor Master's unaffected by it. Going on to the Xyzers, Cyber Dragon Infinity. You bring this out like a say with Soul, Soul Shaved Force. Ugh, tongue twister. Um, once per turn, um, this bad boy can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, absorb it, and um, this guy gains 200 attack for each material, which is absolutely great. And also, when your opponent would activate a um, card effect... You can use, you can detach one overlay unit, negate that, um, and and negate that card. So if this guy is just an absolute bastard to get around. Um, if your opponent can't um, can't like, they would have to play at least two cards to get over this card. 
So you see what I mean? It's really horrible to get over. And it's easy to bring out with Soul Shade Force, which is searchable. And you just use it with four strikes as in your graveyard. Uh, one copy of Evil Swarm and Nightmare. Now, when you're po in this card, you need two level four darks. All of our level four monsters are dark attributes, so of course this card is easy to go into. Uh, when your opponent summons a monster except during the damage step, you can attach one exceeding material from this card and change them all to face down position. And or that will special summon, change them to face down position. And when a monster is face down position, guys, they cannot be used for link summoning. I believe I'm saying that right. So it really shuts down your opponent from doing plays and also they can't and also it just shuts them down from doing exceeds plays as well. Uh, one Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sex. Like I just mentioned earlier, you use this card with Joe and Raikiri to go into Draco Sex. Kind of the only re way you can go into this unless you're going to use it with um, Apex Alpha. Um, once per turn, you can attach one Exceeds material from this card and summon two Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. And while, Dra and while there's a token in play, Draco Sex cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. And it has another ability where you can tribute one Mecha Phantom Beast monster, so you basically attribute a token. Um, and destroy one card your opponent controls. Draco set cannot attack on the turn. It activates its effect, but it just gets around a lot of pesky cards and a lot of pesky spell or traps your opponent has. And then one copy of Raid Raptor Force Talix. Force Talix, guys, um, it gains 5 attack and defense for each Wing Beast, so it kind of will get stronger because all of your monsters are pretty much going to be Wing Beast. Um, once per turn, you can attach one Exceeds Material and add a level 4 or um, and add a level 4. Um, dark wing beast to your hand so you just search out a black wing bora black wing chris and then uh, obviously you will have you should have a card in play to spare should summon it from your hand boom just a free summon and also you can this will work with um zephyrus the elite as well if you really want to do that but you're not really going to do it with zephyrus it's really chris or bora and then going on to our links we are running the wrong copy of crystal on needle fiber i call it needle fiber guys because i cannot pronounce its last name and everyone of course knows it as needle fiber now when this card is link summoned you can target one level three or lower um, tuner from your hand or deck and special into the field so you can just go into black wing gale the whirlwind gale's effect will trigger to then cut one of your opponent's monster attack and defense in half and you just link it away into one of our big boss links that we're going to go into in a bit um it also um you're not going to play its other effects really you're only just going to play that effect so uh, moving on, we have one copy of IP Mascarena. Now, during your opponent's main phase, you can, um, IP Mascarena can um, quick effect can immediately link summon using her and other monsters you control to bring out a link monster. Um, and also, if you did it this way, that monster cannot be um, destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So it's just great just to like, bait your opponent to go into bigger link plays. Mech Knight, Cruselia. Um, Arvamax, this guy is like, apart from Blackwing, he is your other boss, like your big boss Bruce boy. Um, he's actually easier to bring out than normal because of Blackwing Armor Master, because they, Armor Master steals, can steal your opponent's monsters that are special summoned from the extra deck, so it's just easier to go into him. And when this card is special summoned, this card on the field cannot be targeted um, by your opponent's card effects, also it cannot, be just, um, can, cannot be targeted by your monster's attack. Um, oh, for example, um, other monsters I don't think you control cannot be targeted for attack, I think it is, sorry. Um, once once um, per battle, during damage calculation, if this card battles a special summoned monster, um, you can make this card gain attack equal to that monster's attack points. And if this link summon card you control is destroyed, you can shuffle one card your opponent control. So it's just an overall boss. So you, you attack in, if this attack attacks into a monster your opponent controls, or you attack into a monster that was special summoned, Boom, it's just going to get a massive attack point. And if your opponent just get rid of it, shuffle one of their cards into the deck. Really great. Just to please be aware, do not forget that this card actually has an effect. Because during the, during the replays, I kind of said no to the, re, to the absorb attack points effect. And it kind of went to the graveyard. So please forgive me for that misplay. And two copies of White Strix. Now, White Strix, guys, is the one you want to go into near enough straight away when you can. And why is that? Because if this bad boy is Link Summoned, you can special summon a level 4 Winged Beast from your deck in defense mode. Its effects are negated. And also, um, it cannot be used um, as a Link material. Um, but no offense, the monster you've just summoned, you're going to go into an Xyz Raid Raptor anyway. And, and speaking of which, if a Raid Raptor Xyz monster activates its effect, you can immediately set one Rank Up Magic um, card from our deck directly to the field. So, you see what I mean by searching the Soul Shave Force? There you go. 
this one bad boy sets that straight from your deck. So that means you can go into absolute bigger plays. So what you do is with this bad boy, you summon out, um, like you link summon into this, you special summon Zephyrus. You really want to summon Zephyrus more than the others because obviously Zephyrus can't be special summoned. Like, or what well, it can, but not made from your hand. The others can. So you special summon from the hand. You go into Weiss, so you go into Forstrix. Forstrix's ability will then activate. Searching out another black ring to your hand, really. And uh, then Rystrix's effect will activate, setting the force, setting the soul, sh soul shape force. What you can do is then, you can then, um, if I'm, if I remember correctly, Zephyrus's ability is target one face up card. So what you can do is then you can um, link those two away to go into the big ass boy, which is Bird of Sovereignty. And then because Y Strix or Four Strix is in the graveyard, you can then play your Shoal Saved, bring out Cyber Dragon Infinity. You see what I mean by a badass combo, boys? So bad, so bad. And that's literally just from going into two monsters. Absolute broken. And Bird of Sov and Sovereignty, this is a mouthful to play. Um, it's two monsters, guys, including a Winged Beast. So say, for instance, the only card you have in your hand is like, I don't know, um, Aruster and Gale the Whirlwind. That's the worst case scenario in, if you want to. You could still link into Crystalline Needle Fiber, and then I believe you can go into Crystalline Needle Fiber with that. Um, uh, two monsters, including the Tuna. There you go. So basically, what you'll do is you'll go into Crystalline Needle Fiber. Its ability will then activate summon out a Tuna, so you could just bring out another Gale. And then, because you have at least a Winged Beast, you can then link summon into Bird of Sovereignty. And what this bad boy is, it cannot be um, used as link material. It doesn't matter. I didn't really. I need to remember it can't be used as link material. You really do need to remember that because I always forget. I'm like, why can't I not use this card to go into the higher plays? Ah, can't be used as link material. Please remember about that. Your opponent cannot target this card or a winged beast. This card points to with card effects. And if this card would be destroyed by battle, you can destroy another Sumachi card you control instead. You're not going to play that effect. You're really not. You just This card just protects all of your winged beasts, all of your synchros, all of your other black wings on the field. It just protects them. Um... And also during the end phase, during every single end phase, including your opponents, including yours, you can special summon one winged beast from your deck or hand with a level equal to or lower than the total number of unused spell or traps on the field. I don't really get that bit, but I just know you can just special summon a free monster from your, de from your deck during the end phase. If someone can just like refine that, please let me know because it's really tricky. And then one copy of Union Carrier. Guys, Union Carrier is just a badass card. Like, you link summon it using monsters with the same type or attribute, which is just absolutely easy to go into. Um, and you can then target one face-up monster on the field, equip it with a card with the same attribute. And it gains a thousand attack and the equip... Um, and um, it's just absolutely broken. So, if you have a dark monster, you're going to equip Buster Sword. So one of your black wing XC, um, synchros, some like that really. You're gonna equip it to. You're gonna equip um, Dragon Buster to it. That locks your opponent out of the extra deck. If you have a wing beast such as Samachi, you can then target the Thunder. Um, you can then target Thunderbird and equip that to Samachi. Then during your end phase, just immediately summon Apex Alphon, and that sets up your That sets up your infinite lock straight away. And that's it for the deck, guys. I kind of have rambled on a lot, but this deck is just so good. It's really important. You just have to ramble on a bit. Now, during the replays, guys, I want to stress this highly enough. Please stress. I have messed up a lot of plays, especially with um, the Mech Knight Crusader. Again, like I say, I forgot to, I forgot its ability that um, it can if it attacks, it gains attack points. I forgot that Samachi gains that can't be used for link summoning. I used Blackwing Gale's effect when I shouldn't have done. I did a lot of things wrong. I really did. So please don't hinder the misplays during the replays. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if you like this deck, guys, hit that thumbs up. Makes me see if you guys enjoy this deck or not. And it's just a revamped version of my old black wing that I've uh, wing before the update. This is the new one after it. It just makes it so much better. And it's just a really fun deck to play. Black wings always have been. And yeah, guys, I'll see you on the next um, next um, duel or deck, um, deck list. Remember, guys... Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care.